you post a photo on Facebook or Instagram and you get 10 likes. You upload a video or an image to your story and you get 300 viewers. Moral of the story, they don't like you. They'd rather not support you, but they're part of your audience because they're watching. You post a photo on Facebook or Instagram and you get 10 likes. You upload a video or an image to your story and you get 300 viewers. Moral of the story, they don't like you. They'd rather not support you, but they're part of your audience because they're watching. So they broke up with you. They told you that they don't want to be with you anymore, but they're still texting you. But why? What does that actually mean? Well, I don't think anybody could ever know why, but we can speculate. They probably want to keep you on the side. They want to keep you on the string, but you deserve the whole piece of cake because you're better than that. So please just delete, move forward move on you're better than that the right person is not going to be so far away but you have to be clear clear of the past doors are open for us by people on the inside joseph had the wisdom and the skill set to deliver egypt from destruction but it took the butler that was inside the palace to open the door this reminds us that everyone has purpose everyone has value and everyone is useful. God sometimes uses strangers to deliver us, to help us, to save us. And when we least expect it, we become the chosen ones to save someone else. Closure. Closure is overrated. Stop looking for closure. Someone disappearing from your life is gonna save you a whole lot of time. The worst person is not the one that disappears on you. It's the one that disappears, reappears, disappears, reappears, because that person will waste your entire life. This is the person that you haven't heard from in days, weeks, months, and then sends you that random text that says, thinking of you. But don't get excited and give that person your investment. Don't do it anymore. The intentions are clear. So get out there, get out there, meet new people. You're worth it. Forgiveness is hard because the hurt mattered. Did you know that? However, forgiving someone doesn't mean you trust them. It doesn't mean you have to restart a relationship with them. It simply means that you're no longer dependent on them to right the wrong. You are releasing them from owning you. It's time to be free. Breaking up is okay. Getting divorced is okay. Moving on is absolutely okay. Starting over, absolutely okay. What's not okay is staying where you're not wanted. Staying where the energy doesn't match yours. It's okay to leave. Know your worth. Ladies, I don't even know how many times I've brought this up, posted about it, talked about it. But if you want a man to respect you and be with you for the right reasons, you got to keep a lot of that clothes on. Don't post those intimate photos in lingerie. Don't do that to yourself, to your kids, to your family. You got to have self-respect. You got to leave as much as possible to the imagination. Lingerie, come on. You may be doing it because of validation. You think you're being validated because you get likes and you get comments, but there's no self-respect. Not to mention those of you that on your profile, you state where it says God first, God over everything. Really? You think God approves? You got another thing coming. You're doing it all wrong. And that's why you find yourself in a situation that you're in. You may have somebody, that person doesn't respect you or themselves. So just keep it classy because it's classy women that always win at the end. Listen, the most important day is the day that you realize and agree that you matter. This is when you truly feel it and you agree that you're good enough for you. Realize this 
and you can be vulnerable with another person. And that ain't weakness. That's a love language. It's a love language that says, tell me everything. It may not always be what the other person wants to hear, but it's what your soul wants to reveal to them. It's not always what you say. It could be how you say it, but it needs to be said because you matter. We each have different standards and different perceptions as to what love is, what love means. That often tears a relationship apart. There's one that expects more, the other expects less. One sacrifices more, the other sacrifices less. One supports, the other one supports less. It doesn't mean that anybody's wrong. Human beings love the best way they know how. People are gonna love their own way. The challenge and the solution is finding someone that loves the same or similar as your brand of love. And that's where perceptions have to meet and match. I want you to love being rejected. That may sound crazy, but there's something beautiful about someone saying no to you or no to what you want. The reason is because the word no is definite and very clear. There's no ambiguity there. And it's fantastic because it enables you to know exactly where you stand. When someone says no, it creates the space for the person that's a better fit for you to come into your life and the person that will say yes. So instead of trying to convince someone to see what you see and to want what you want, instead say thank you to them and wish them well. Let them go. They may have saved you a lot of heartache and a whole lot of time. Believe me, if you did just about everything right, tried your best and remained true, trust me, they're gonna miss you. So walk away without any doubts or any remorse. Don't second guess any of the decisions that you made. Not everything goes the way we want, but be sure, be certain that they're gonna learn the lesson that was necessary and according to their life's plan. Just keep moving forward. That's the only direction. If you're a mother that considers yourself a good mother, then that should include being a decent ex-wife, ex-girlfriend, ex-lover to the father of your child if he indeed is doing his best to be in the child's life. He may have wronged you in the past when you were together, but that's got absolutely nothing to do with your child. So don't speak bad of him to your child. Don't make it impossible, difficult for him to spend time with your child. That's only gonna hurt your child. And honestly, if you do this, that means you're not a good mother. And for the fathers out there, make sure that you're a real one, a good one, not a deadbeat, that you're present, willing, able, and it shows through your actions. Otherwise, you're no better either. But to both parents, don't inject negativity into your child's life. One day, they're going to realize it. They're going to know it. And it's going to affect them. And it would have been both your faults. Be better. You know what we're not doing today? Is feeling sorry for ourselves. We're not going to be crying in our cars to and from work. Nope. Not to mention, there's people right now that don't even have a job. What we're going to do is remind ourselves how much we've already overcome. How many obstacles we faced and we stayed standing. And we're going to remind ourselves of how many people love us just the way we are. So get up and remember who the fuck you are. Remember that in your family, you're the badass that makes things happen. You're not weak. You're just going through it. So rise up on this day. Never ask someone where the relationship is going. Instead, tell them where you would like it to go and ask them where they would like it to go. This avoids lots of misunderstandings. Let them know what you really like about them, how much you love, you enjoy spending time with them. Let them know what you would like to see happen. And be clear if you would like it to progress to the next step. This shows confidence, it shows awareness, and that you are all in. Questions are important, but they're never strong enough as statements and those that are heartfelt. So say what you mean, mean what you say, and make sure you're both 
on the same page. Never sit at those tables with people that are talking bad about someone that isn't there. Avoid those that cast stones from a distance with malice and behind somebody's back. If you choose to sit with those kind of people, that says a whole lot about you and who you may have become. Because the second that you stand up from that table, what do you think is going to happen? If you drive in Miami or LA traffic, you know that it could bring out the very worst of you. And that's just traffic. Life will continue to push you, push you towards aggravation and potentially not being the nicest person. It stirs up sort of uh, negative emotions. But you have to remember that some actions are permanent and some words can't be taken back. So you have to find restraint and not go for the first word or the first action that your emotions are steering you towards. The other person may not be going through the same thing that you are, perhaps something even worse. So be kind where you can. And if nothing else, offer yourself calm and peace for your own world. I just had a few weeks that were pretty rough. So if you're stressed out from work, from family life, a relationship, school, let me share with you some comforting words that actually helped me. Take, O oh Lord, my memory, my understanding, my entire life, and my whole will, all that I am and all that I possess that you've given me. I surrender it all to you so that you may dispose of it as you see fit according to your will. Give me only your love and your grace, for this is sufficient for me. For this, I will be rich enough. I will desire nothing more. Amen.